Hey there, this is Marcy Ava Worrell, your local Close to My Heart consultant here in Georgia. This evening I want to share with you how to create a quick and easy two-page layout using Cricut Design Space. I use Cricut Design Space quite a bit for my scrapbooking needs as well as some other paper crafts. Um, and I just thought maybe if more people saw just how easy it is, they might be more inclined to use it. And if you are already using it, I'd love to see some of the things that you create. So here on my profile page, you'll just see a few of the items that I have shared in the Cricut community, but those are certainly not all of the items I've made on here. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go into new project and I'm gonna show you typically how I do things. Now there are tons of ways to do this, but this is just what's easiest for me. Now I'm going to be using some close to my heart um, Cricut cartridges tonight. I have all of the ones that are available to us um, currently. So these are the ones that I use most often. So I'm gonna start off with images and I'm gonna to go to cartridges and type in close to my heart. And that's gonna pull up all the ones that we have and you'll see we have quite a few. So the one that I'm gonna focus on tonight the most is going to be art booking. So I'm gonna click view all images and I actually kind of already know what it is that I want, but I just wanted to show you some of the neat things that are available here. So I am actually going to use, let's see, let's go with, ooh, the stars are pretty, a little zebra, let's go with the chevron. All right, so we're going to go ahead and you'll see it popped up down here when I clicked on it. I'm also going to find a title. So let's see, we have sunshine, we have big ideas, party time, um, my sunshine, cherish. We'll actually go with cherish. There we go. All right, so those are the two that I need for this. So we're going to insert images. Now you'll notice I pulled that in first and I'll show you why in just a second. All right, so I know that my background page is going to be 12 by 12. So my little small portion here is going to be about half the size of the page. Now I find if I go to height first, because in Cricut you can't go past 11 and a half, I go there and it will automatically give me what the dimensions would be to keep this sort of in the proper ratio. Now 10 is gonna be a little too wide for me, so I'm gonna unlock this and I'm actually gonna bring this down to about six, hit enter. Perfect, all right. So that's the first part. So now I have that. I'm going to minimize my screen so I can see everything in the same shot. It's about half of my 12 by 12 layout. Now I am all about working smarter, not harder. And I have a tendency to double map my photos. And a lot of times if I'm going to use an overlay such as this one, I wanna make sure that I don't have to cut out all these little itty bitty pieces if I don't have to. So my photos, most of them I use, I print here at the house with a Canon selfie. And so it gives that great little white edging all the way around the photo. So I typically don't have to double map mine. I can, it has the white already and then I just mat a color underneath. So I am going to set mine to be just big enough to go behind that matting. So if it's a four by six photo, then I'm gonna make my matting six and a half, I'm sorry, six and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, and I am going to put it right here for just a second. So you'll see how that goes just beyond what I need. So I'm going to, I can do one of two things. I can either center this and leave it like it is, or I can make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to actually elect to make this a little bit bigger. So I am actually going to make it six and a quarter by 11 and a half. That way it fits perfect. All right, so there we go. So I know I'm going to have at least one photo here. So what I'm going to do, and this is why I did this first, is I am actually going to weld these two pieces. So all I did was just highlight the two, hit weld, and now when it goes to cut it out, all of those little tiny chevron pieces will not cut here. There's no need for them to cut there because that's where I'm gonna put my photo. Now to kind of give you a visual and a placeholder, I am gonna go ahead and put a white piece there so that you can kind of see where that is. So again, if I was doing my photos, typically they are four by six. I'm gonna go ahead and change that. All right, we're gonna change that to white. And that way you just have a cute little placeholder there. All right, perfect. Okay, so that's the first part. So now I can go back in and I am actually gonna create my other photo mats. I know I need at least one, two, maybe three more. So I'm gonna go in and like I said, I'm gonna pretend that 
I have my photos here. So everywhere you see white are my four by six photos, or if I do a four by four, and then these are gonna be my mats. So this first one, I'm going to make it six and a quarter by four and a quarter. All right, I am gonna make that the same. Um, instead of rose color, I'm actually gonna make it a, a light gray because I'm gonna make my background dark gray in just a moment. So I have this first one. Then I'm gonna add in what would be my pseudo photo. And that piece is gonna be the six by four. Okay, I'm gonna change it to white. And I'm going to mat it. All right, okay, I'm gonna group it. That way everywhere that this travels, they travel together. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna duplicate it once, like this. And I know that that's a good size. And then I'm gonna create another one. Actually, yeah, just one more. And that one, we're gonna make the opposite. So this one's going to be four and a quarter by 6.25. Now I could have simply copied the ones that I had down here and then just rotated them. But I find sometimes when you do that, it does not always align appropriately. Even though it's supposed to, it, it doesn't. And so I just feel more comfortable creating them um, from scratch again. Okay, again, we're going to make that piece white. We're going to make this piece that gray color. All right. And I'm going to center that and again group that together so they stay together. All right, so let's move this down just a little bit. And now I'm going to come back behind here and put in my actual pseudo 12 by 12 paper. Now, of course, we all know 12 by 12 um, does not typically need to be cut because it comes in 12 by 12. Um, so those are really here just for show. And then of course, um, it will cut up to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And you'll see that in just a moment that I'm actually going to use that. So here's my background paper. I changed it to black because that is the color I want. I'm going to make it 12 and then I'm going to duplicate it. And these are going to be my back pieces. Line one there, line one here. Okay. And now this piece here, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna leave it there for just a second. I'm gonna add in my layer that I want. That's 11.5. All right, and we're gonna change that to the darker gray. Um, I think we're actually gonna go with that one right there. There we go. I'm gonna duplicate it as well. So one piece will go here, and I'll try to center it. One piece will go right there. All right. Looks good. And now I'm going to bring this forward. So I'm just going to go to send forward. And I'm going to leave it right about there. And that piece right there, which I should have grouped that ahead of time. I apologize that I didn't, which is why that did not go. So that I should have grouped together. So here's this first piece here. So now I am actually going to add in, I think, a couple and something to go across this bottom piece here. So now I want to make it with 11.5 and I'm going to make this first layer uh, by three inches. I am going to make it the same rose color. There we go. Perfect. I'm bring that down just a little bit and now I'm going to duplicate it, change the size to two, and then change the color to white. All right, so let's see, do I want it in the middle? Um, no, actually, I think I want to take it all the way across. So let me unlock this 11.5. All right, and I'm going to put that right there. I think that might be where I'm going to put my title. I'm not sure just yet. All right, so there we have that piece. So now I'm going to come back in, and I know that I need at least one mat here. I'm gonna bring that to the front, there we go. I know I want at least one here. I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit. Also, we're gonna bring that to the front, or send to the front. Um, and then my last one, I'm thinking about tilting it slightly. Whoops, sorry. Pull that back down, there we go. 
All right. Here it is. Send to the front. Okay, so I can see. Let's see, do I like it there? Um, actually, I think I'm going to turn it maybe that way. I'm going to bring it right here to the edge a little bit. All right. Then I'm going to tilt it just a tad here. Bring it down. All right, perfect. Okay, so now that title I had, Cherish. Scroll up till we find it. There it is. It was hidden. I'm going to bring it to the front. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I think I'm going to change that to black. Yep, I like that. Okay, we're going to put that right here. And I may make it just big enough to overlap that photo a little bit. Let's see how I like that. Mm, maybe right there. Okay, that looks good. All right, so I kind of have the basis there, and I am going to add in a couple more things. So we're back to art booking. Let's see if we have any butterflies on here. I use butterflies quite a bit on many of my layouts. Ooh, I like that one. Okay, so there's one. So let's use that one. So we're going to insert, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Let's see, and you'll have to excuse my son that's, I think, crying in the background if you can hear it. Okay, there's one. And let's duplicate that. We're going to do another one on this side, but we're just going to rotate it. Um, let's see. Oh. Right there. Okay, bring it down. Nope, <laughs> let me turn it again. Uh, does not want to rotate. Okay, hold on. Let's see. There we, oh, there we go. All right, perfect. Okay, and of course we're gonna change those colors. So this first layer here, actually I kinda like the teal. Um, let's see, let's leave the teal, maybe change the purple to a lighter pink. Let's see how that looks. Mm, no, I think I'll stick with the, the, the same pink. There we go. Let's change this one too. There we go. All right, and I'm gonna add one last thing. I'm gonna put a little journal box up here in the corner. Now, I am fond of using um, different shapes for my journal box. I don't always use squares. But you um, can certainly change that to however you like. Uh-oh. There we go. All right. So we're going to make this. Let's go with. And, of course, if you're using this design link when I'm finished, because I will um, post it and make it public so you can use it, you can always put a photo here if you like. All right. So I'm actually going to make that. I actually like that teal color. I think we'll go with that. And then I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to make it white, and then I'm going to make it just a tad smaller. All right, so that is my journal box. All right, and there you have it. That, for me, would be a two-page layout. There's enough space for two four-by-six photos, and there is a journal box or a fifth photo, totally up to you. You could add another photo here if you wanted, or even a smaller one here in the corner. Um, I try not to crowd my uh, pages at all. I do occasionally put like rhinestones or sequins or something on them as well to kind of bring some additional um, dimension to the page. So I might add some of that, you know, in this extra space here, or I might just leave it. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions at all, please do feel free to ask. I, like I said, I will make this po public and I will post the link um, down in the description box below. Thanks so much and have an awesome night. Goodbye.